Number 81 on our list of 100 best movies of all time is a cult comedy classic called Young Frankenstein from Mel Brooks. Give my creation life! We could have just as easily chosen Blazing Saddles, which was his Wild West homage, but this is an homage to the old 30s, 40s, and 50s monster movies. That's right. We like monsters. Monsters always will beat cowboys, right. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Son of a bitch bastard, I'll get you for this! What did you do to me? This is 1974. Mm -hmm. We were not even really alive back then. <laughs> but I remember finding Frankenstein terrifying at the time. For sure. And then I saw this movie, and here's this comedic take. Here's Gene Wilder who, yeah. of course, I knew as Willy Wonka. Of course. It had this friendlier kind of tone to it. And I sat down and I started to watch this thing because I hadn't seen it in a long time. And what struck me first is how beautiful this film looks because it's in black and yeah, white. I know. And it's just shot so lovingly. It's yeah. lit so lovingly. I mean, it reminded me of Ed Wood a little bit, in that yeah. sense because yeah. here is a production that obviously Mel Brooks lavished over and spent money and time and energy and effort to create. And then these performances given by, by Gene Wilder who played is Frederick Frankenstein, as he prefers to be known over the course of the film, because he doesn't want to follow in his grandfather's footsteps. That's Frankenstein. At the start of the film, he is teaching a class in a medical school, and he performs these crazy experiments on this live guy. And then this creepy guy walks into his classroom, and he's got a box that he has brought all the way from Transylvania that convinces him that he needs to travel back to the old world, and he gets on a train. And of course, he winds up back in Transylvania. He winds up at the castle, and of course, he meets he Igor. winds up, well, Igor, as he prefers to be called. <laughs> now it's pronounced Igor. And Marty Feldman, who else is going to hire Marty Feldman except for Mel Brooks? I mean, this guy is incredible. Yeah, He's got he the one eye going this way and the one eye going well, that Peter way. Peter Boyle as your monster is just incredible, too. This is a comedic giant in every sense of the word. And he was an actor's actor. He was a guy that could go as dark and as serious as you could possibly want, but he's hilarious well, as the monster. Him with his performance in Taxi Driver, right. and you can see what this guy's capable Absolutely. of. But you know who else is really funny in this film is Terry Gar, yep. who I don't think has ever been more beautiful than she is in this sure. film. Oh! It's loaded with great character actors and famous faces that you've seen throughout the years. It looks like it was shot in the 50s, you know, because of its black and white kind of vibe and its style, you know? And it doesn't all work. That's no. the thing, you know? And nobody is cornier than Mel Brooks. Well, but for like some a... reason, he's just relentless in his pursuit of these corny jokes, and he just pulls them off with such totally. conviction that you wind up going with the whole thing. Oh, you men are all alike seven or eight quick ones and you're off with the boys. And it's funny every step of the way, this is probably the only monster movie that my dad has ever watched with me in my life. Walk this way. Yeah, and there are so many moments, not unlike Monty Python and the Holy yeah, Grail, absolutely. that you will be quoting for the rest of your life after you see this thing. <laughs> Quiet dignity and grace. <laughs> Well, and the other thing, too, is that we picked this one because we love it, but, you know, you have to see some of the other Mel Brooks stuff out there. Spaceballs, you have to see. You have to see Blazing Sun. I mean, that's like the trilogy of genre love from this guy, you know, who obviously could see the sense of quirk and the right material for uh, satire and comedy. And Brooks has been around for so long, he comes from that vaudevillian school of just throw it at the wall and see what sticks and something will be funny. And I think he found a bit of a muse, I think, with Gene Wilder as well. Gene Wilder was the consummate straight guy, but he had this accessibility. You care about the guy, but there was something so lovable about Gene Wilder, but also a little off. Elevate me. Now, right here? He's yeah. a man who really embraces his Jewishness. He's a man who embraces difference. He's a man who's not afraid to make fun of himself yep. and make fun of the people around him. There's a boldness in that kind of behavior. Of course, the whole thing crescendos with Wilder and young Frankenstein, Peter Boyle, performing, putting on the Ritz yeah. on stage together. And of course, one of the uh, one of the lights flashes in front of him and Peter Boyle goes crazy. And, and you gotta see it. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where Fashion sits. You know what, Mel Brooks still alive and yep. well, knock on wood, and yep. still producing stuff and still making stuff, even you know at this late stage in his life, this guy has had an incredible career. So congratulations to you, Mel Brooks, Young Frankenstein. You are number 81 in our greatest films of all time. It's alive!